What is up YouTube? It's your boy Robski coming at you with another video and this time I'm going to be doing a book review. Now um, it's been a while since I did a book review and this is kind of a little late to the, the party because of the NCAA tournament is over but um, I just read this book called The Last Great Game. Um, it's about the Duke Kentucky game back in 1992. Now I thought this game originally was about the um, championship, but it wasn't. It was about the playing game to get the championship. Um, I, if I watched it on YouTube, and uh, it went into overtime, and it was pretty incredible. Um, what I like about this book a lot is you get to see the backgrounds of both Rick Pitino and Mike Krzyzewski. Now, after I've been more, I mean... I'll root for Gonzaga, um, just kind of their local. Um, I also kind of like Kentucky a little bit. But after reading this, I have a lot of respect for Coach Krzyzewski. And um, I think that he is, you know, pretty amazing guy. Uh, a lot of people don't know this, but I didn't know this. He was an Army officer. Um, and he kind of went through some things. Um, he started out having a losing season. And then just built one of the best basketball programs of all time in Duke. Um, another interesting characters. Uh, there's a guy from Kentucky by the last name of Pelfrey. Um, Christian Leitner is very interesting, even though he was very hated by a lot of people. Um, he's uh, very, um, very influential in this book. He was the one that made the shot at the end. You learn a little bit more about Grant Hill, his background. And a guy named Bobby Hurley, who was a really good guard for Duke. And, um, again, didn't do anything in the NBA. I don't think he even made it to the NBA. So, you know, you don't know much about that guy. But you get a really cool sense of how these people came together and made these programs. Um, another guy, Jay, Jay Belas, you could see him on ESPN commentating, um, things like that. I even mentioned Shaquille O'Neal, who was my favorite basketball player for a while. Um, the, the book is kind of, it is kind of starts off slow because you're, you're getting a background of, uh, Mike Krzyzewski and, uh, Patino and it's kind of a background of the history of Duke and the history of Kentucky. One thing I didn't understand was that, um, you know, I kind of, I kind of admitted I became a bandwagon Kentucky fan back in 2012 and they had that wonderful team, uh, led by, uh, Michael Kidd Gilchrist and Anthony Davis and, uh, they were um, coached by John Calipari, who's kind of an anti-hero in the basketball community. He was the one that first embraced the one and done, and that's why he had all these NBA guys going to Kentucky because he's like, look, I'm going to get you here, get you out, get you paid. So he's, he's my, kind of my kind of guy. Anyways, um, I think that what you'll learn, you learn the culture of college basketball is a lot different back then. Um, Krzyzewski had a personality that was similar to my basketball coach. Um, he was very vocal, very, um, military, militaristic, and he was very, um, he was very hard on his players. Now, because of this, this is how come his program be, be, did so well. Um, this has kind of been a lost art because of our softening of our society. Um, but if you... You know, if you train somebody, if you train somebody to do a certain thing um, like this, you get results. And whether you like his style or his, his uh, opinion, uh, the guy got results. Um, like I said, very hard on his players, um, but that that's one of the reasons why that program succeeded. At the end of the book, uh, it also talks about that Kentucky Wildcat team in uh, 2012 that ended up winning it. But um, it really explains the significance of this game that happened back in 1992 and why the Kentucky basketball program is the way it is and why the Duke basketball program is the way it is. Uh, you know, back then, people's pinnacle achievement was not to make the professional leagues, but was to play for Kentucky, um, play for a Duke, play for uh, Indiana basketball. It was a bigger deal back then. Um, most people, the one and done weren't there. You know, they, a lot of these, a lot of these kids would stay in the program for four years. The culture was a lot different than it is now. Um, these are kind of the glory days of college basketball. Also mentions Dick Vitale in here. Uh, Tarkinen, uh, coach at, uh, UNLV. He was a legendary coach as well. 
So, you know, I know I touched on this subject a lot, but um, when, when you see how things were and what they are now, uh, I think that based on the internet, I mean, people are more aware of, you know, who's getting deals, how things work now. It's really harder to fool people because everything's under a microscope. You know, back then, it was kind of, you know, people weren't worried. People didn't know who's going to get drafted right away. They didn't have YouTube or anything like that. And it was really all about the program. You know, now it's a totally different ballgame. It's more of a business. Um, I get this book. If I had five stars, I'm going to give it um, three and a half. The book started out very slow um, at the beginning, but then at the end, it was a good read. It's a pretty quick read. Uh, clocks in at, we're looking at uh, about 300. Let me see here. The whole book entirety, 300 and two pages. Um, good quick read. You learn a lot about the history of these historical programs, and, and I personally love the NC, the NCAA tournament is one of the few things the NCAA has gotten right. Um, I personally love it, and uh, I can't wait for it next year. Anyways, good read. Last dance. La I sorry, the last great game. Duke versus Kentucky. Read it, YouTubers. Kurt, uh, Robski out.